Hi there, my name is Richard McMahon from the career guidance and educational company howtobecome.com and in this training video I'm going to teach you how to pass the prison officer selection test. Now if you want to become a prison officer you will need to pass two prison officer selection tests or posts as they are sometimes referred to. Now one of them is an online test and the second one is actually at the prison officer recruitment assessment day. So the test that I'm going to provide you with during this tutorial will help you prepare effectively and fully for both sets of tests. Now the idea is that I'm going to give you a tutorial, I'm going to cover some sample test questions, give you the answers and explanations as to how I reach the answer, but also I'm going to get you guys to try some of the test questions yourself. Okay, so it's interactive, you can try, work it out, um, and then put your answers in the comments section below the video. I will also give you access to further tests. So once we've done this video, watch it from beginning to end and then I'm going to tell you how you can accelerate your learning even further and help prepare more effectively with some online resources and also a book that will help you to prepare. So let's get straight into it. First of all, about the prison officer selection test, the post. So once you've made your initial online application to be a prison officer and it has been successful, you will be invited to sit an online version of the prison officer selection test and there is also a post prison officer selection test at the assessment day and they are both different in the style of questions you will have to answer. Now the test itself is designed to be representative of the types of numerical tests that prison officers are required to carry out on a daily basis. So if you think of the kind of tasks that you would have to do as a prison officer you're going to have to count um, prison of prison uh, sorry prisoners you're going to have to cross reference to see how many prisoners are in a particular ward how many are in their cells you'll also have to use a 24-hour clock you'll have to recall information you'll have to analyze information so they are all basic numerical tests that you'll have to carry out but accuracy is absolutely vital OK, accuracy is really important and we'll talk about that as we go through the test itself. Now, there are four sections to the online test consisting of a total of 56 questions. You've got 60 minutes to complete the test, which equates to approximately 15 minutes per section. Now, you can pause this test. You can save and exit and come back to it, um, which is great. You can also use a calculator, which is, is great as well. Um, is the test easy? It's not that difficult to pass. However, you can get caught out. OK, you can get caught out. Accuracy is really important. OK, and we'll work through that as we go on. Now, the good news is you are permitted, as I say, to use a calculator and you don't lose any marks for incorrect answers. But don't guess. My advice is to not guess the answers because it's not like a multiple choice type test where you can guess and you might have a one in four or one in five chance of being successful. With this, you have to input your answer. OK, the questions that you will face during the post are predominantly based, as I said, around numerical reasoning, are representative of the prison officer role. Now, the test can include addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, um, not to an advanced level, just to a basic or intermediate level. Ratios and percentages, cross-referencing lists and, and checking information. You also have to interpret graphs and charts and also be able to use the 24-hour clock, which I'm going to talk about briefly in a second before we move on to some sample test questions. So jobs of this nature, um, like prison service, fire service, police service, ambulance service, you have to be competent in the use of the 24-hour clock. Now, not everyone is competent in the, in the use of it. It's very easy, and I'll give you a quick tutorial, but make sure you fully understand and can use the 24-hour clock. So the 24-hour clock, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the 24-hour clock and also AM and PM, because that's how we generally um, use the clock nowadays. It's either 9 a.m. or 9 p.m., um, 11 a.m. or 11 p.m., but that's not the 24-hour version. So if you look at this on the left, starting at midnight, um, up at the top there. So for midnight, it's 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 1 a.m. is 0, 100 hours, 2 a.m. is 0, 200 hours, 0, 300, and so on and so forth. And then when you get into the afternoon, so 12 midday is 12, uh, 1,200 hours, and then 1 p.m. is 1,300 hours, 1,400 hours. So if you need to learn this, my advice is to pause this video here and look at them. OK, and just learn them. But what you can do up until so from midnight up until midday, it's just zero to twelve. So zero one hours, zero two hours. But once you get past midday, it just goes all the way out to twenty four. 
Okay, so 2300 hours, 11 p.m. That's a 24 hour clock. I'll give you a couple of sample test questions to work through as we go through the prison officer selection test during this tutorial. So once you've successfully passed the online post, you will then be invited to attend a recruitment assessment day. And during the recruitment assessment day, or RAD as it is sometimes called, you will see another version of the prison officer selection test. And as I say, I'm going to help you prepare for that during this video. So let's now take a look at a number of sample prison officer selection test questions. As I said, I'm going to do some um, questions myself and give you the answers and explanations. But I also want you to do a number of them for me work them out and then put your responses, your answers in the comment section below the video. Question number one. Okay, so this is basically a number of prisoners. If you look in the bottom left on the corner of the screen, it says one person equals one prisoner. We've got the dining room and the exercise yard, the gym, the library, and this is a prison, a fictitious prison. Question one, which area has the most prisoners? Question two, which area has the least prisoners? And question three, how many prisoners are in the dining room? So basically, you have to add up all of the prisoners in each particular area. And that's the first thing I would do. Now, during the online prison officer selection test, you will have to answer a number of questions based around quite a few of these type of questions where there's prisoners. Um, you have to add them up. So it's looking for speed and accuracy. Remember what I said earlier about addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. And this kind of question will assess now, uh, assess those skills. Now, it is quite monotonous because you have to actually sit there and add them up, but you can get them wrong, okay, because this is quite a basic one. When you see that some of the other questions, there's a lot of prisoners in there. So the first one, which area has the most prisoners? Well, what you have to do, first and foremost, is add up all of the different numbers in each particular area. So it's 32 in the dining room, 27 in the exercise yard, 30 in the library and also 29 in the gym. So if you've got 60 minutes to complete the test, 15 minutes for each section, even though it's quite easy, you could quite easily get it wrong. So if you've got, say, 28 in the gym and you added them all up, you'll be wrong. So which area has the most prisoners? Well, based on that, it's the dining room. Which area has the least prisoners? Well, we know it's the exercise yard because it's 27. And how many prisoners are there in the dining room? Well, we know it's 32. Very, very easy. So then we'll move on to some other questions based on the same situation. Question number four, a quarter of all prisoners in the dining room go to the gym. How many prisoners remain in the dining room? So we're doing some subtraction here. Step one, we need to calculate a quarter of 32 because it's 32 prisoners in the dining room, but a quarter of them go to the gym. So subtract eight from 32 and we get the answer 24. Simple. OK, so a quarter of 32 because we want to know a quarter of the prisoners in the dining room. So a quarter fours into 32 equals eight and then subtract eight from 32 to get the answer 24. Next question, number five, half the prisoners in the library, so there's 30 in there, go to the dining room. How many prisoners remain in the library? So it is half. All we have to do is calculate 50 percent of 30. Really easy to do. And the answer is 15. Question number six. Now it's your turn. I want you guys to have a go at this. So this is a different image from the one before. Each dot represents one prisoner. and We've got communal areas, dining area, cell block and visitors room. Now you will have to pause the video to count the number of prisoners. So which area has the most prisoners? And put your answer in the comments section below the video. And don't forget what you have to do is add up how many prisoners are in each particular area. And when you're going through the online test, which you would don't probably do at home or at work then when you're doing the online test the actual real one write down the particular section so you would put communal areas for example there might be 17 people in there dining area 27 and keep an, a check of those because you will need to refer back to them for further questions and sometimes with one particular image like this you could have 10 or 15 questions based on it so question six which area has the most prisoners so you need to calculate each of the prisoners in each area and work out which area has the most. Question seven, how many prisoners are there in total? So you will have to add up all four areas. And again, put your answer in the comment section to question seven below the video, please, and I'll mark it for you. So we're checking for accuracy. You'll have to calculate all four areas and then add them all together. Question eight, don't forget, pause the video if you need time. Question eight, Here's a more tricky one that I want you to do. If half of the prisoners in the cell block, which is in bottom left, and half of the prisoners in the visitor's room, which is bottom right, move to the communal areas, top left, how many prisoners will there now be in the communal areas? 
So I'll repeat that. Question eight. If half of the prisoners in the cell block and half of the prisoners in the visitors room move to the communal areas, how many prisoners will there be in the communal areas? So it's about accuracy. And you have to be quick with this as well, because even though you've got 60 minutes, it's not a lot of time to complete all of the four different sections. So again, pause the video and then work out the answer and put it in the comments section below. So that's that kind of question that will become common when you sit the online test. And this is great practice. And I'm going to give you more of these soon as well to work through on your own. This is another kind of question where you're, you're basically analyzing information in a chart. So this is a chart and it says across the top sentence length. So this is the length of sentence for prisoners at HMP, Her Majesty's Prison, Houghton. Now, it's got 492 prisoners in total, so it's given us that information, but it says the sentence breakdown can be seen in the table above. How many short-term prisoners are there at HMP? Okay, so we then blue circle it, okay, add them all up, and then we know the answer is 392. Okay, so 392 in total because we add them all up. Next question. All short-term and long-term prisoners on the green and orange wings are moved to another prison. How many prisoners remain at HMP Houghton? So all short-term and long-term prisoners on the green and orange wings, which are there, are moved to another prison. How many prisoners remain at HMP Houghton? So what we have to do is work out how many prisoners move, which is the ones on the green and orange wings. So that's 185 in total. Then we need to subtract the total number, which is 492 minus 185. So the answer is 307 remain at HMP Houghton. OK, another question. And I want you to work this out, please. Question 11. 80 prison officers work at HMP Houghton. Of these, 30 work on the red wing, 15 work on the blue wing and 15 work on the green wing. Of the remaining prison officers, 50% work on the yellow wing and 50% work on the orange wing. How many prison officers work on the yellow wing? So this chart above doesn't have any reference to this question. But I'll repeat that. 80 prison officers work at HMP Houghton. Of these, 30 work on the red wing, 15 work on the blue wing, and 15 work on the green wing. Of the remaining prison officers, 50% work on the yellow wing and 50% on the orange wing. How many prison officers work on the yellow wing? So put your answer to question 11 in the comments section below the video, please. And I will um, I'll mark it for you to let you know if you got it correct or not. Question 12. Now, it takes a prison officer 20 minutes to search one cell. What is the maximum number of cells a prison officer will be able to search in three hours and 20 minutes? So it takes a prison officer 20 minutes to search one cell. What is the maximum number of cells a prison officer will be able to search in three hours and 20 minutes? So what you basically have to do is to work out how many 20 minutes there are in three hours and 20 minutes. Step one, convert three hours and 20 minutes into minutes. So there are 60 minutes per hour. Therefore, three hours times 60 plus the 20 minutes added on at the end equals 200 minutes. Step two, divide 200 minutes into 20, the minutes it takes to search one cell, to achieve your answer. So the answer is that 10 cells can be searched in total. Question 13. In education, it takes a teacher 10 minutes to mark each prisoner's piece of coursework. The teacher has 63 pieces of coursework to mark in total and has allocated one hour and 30 minutes each day to mark. How many days will it take the teacher to mark all 63 pieces of coursework? Please. Put your answer to this question, number 13, in the comments section below the video. I'll repeat the question, number 13. In education, it takes a teacher 10 minutes to mark each prisoner's piece of coursework. The teacher has 63 pieces of coursework to mark in total and has allocated one hour and 30 minutes each day to mark. How many days will it take the teacher to mark all 63 pieces of coursework? So put your answer to question 13 in the comments section below, please. And if you need to pause the video to work it out, please do. Question 14. Now we're coming on to the 24-hour clock. When prison officers write reports, they use the 24-hour clock. Your job is to convert 6.30 a.m. into the 24-hour clock. Now, the answer to this is simply 0630 hours. And if you remember that chart that I showed you early on at the beginning, all we need to do is to go to that area and add 30 minutes, 0630 hours. Next question 15. Again, when prison officers write reports, they use the 24-hour clock. Convert 12.15 a.m. 
into the 24-hour clock. So the answer to that is 0, 0, 0,015 hours. So again, use the chart that I showed you. And don't forget, it's 4, 0 starting at midnight, 0, 0, 0,015. Question 16. Now, this is the use of the 24-hour clock. This is not easy. I want you guys to do this and put your answer in the comment section below the video for marking. A prison officer has a 45-minute lunch break. She leaves the office at 12.45 hours. What time must she return to the office? Please use the 24-hour clock. So a prison officer has a 45-minute lunch break. She leaves the office at 12.45 hours. So what time must she return to the office? So use the 24-hour clock. So put your answer to question 16 in the comment section below and I'll mark it for you. Question 17. 42. HMP Houghton operates the following timetable. 0800 hours, the cells are unlocked. 1200 hours, the cells are locked. 1400 hours, the cells are unlocked. 1730 hours, the cells are locked. 1830 hours, cells are unlocked. 21 hours, the cells are locked. And the question is, how many hours each day are the cells unlocked? So you have to add up how many hours the cells are unlocked for. Just a quick one, sorry for the word 42 next to HMP out, and it's got no reference to this question, okay? I apologize for that. So question 17, HMP Houghton operates the following timetable. So how many hours each day are the cells unlocked? So here's how to calculate this. So we need to work out the number of hours between 0812 midday, because it says that they are unlocked, and that's the time they're locked again, 12 midday. So that's four hours. Again, calculate. From 1,400 hours, the cells are unlocked again, and they're locked at 17.30, so that's 3.5 hours. Then they're unlocked again at 18.30 hours and locked at 2,100, so that's two and a half hours. And all we have to do is add all of those up, and the answer is 10 hours. Now, I want you to have a go at this, please. Question 18. Again, disregard the 42. That's my mistake. Question 18. H&P Houghton operates the following timetable. It's the same as before. 0,800, they're unlocked. Midday, they're locked. 2 p.m. in the afternoon, they're unlocked. Half past five in the afternoon, which is 17.30 hours, the cells are locked. 18.30, which is 6.30 p.m., cells are unlocked. And then 9 p.m., 21 hours, the cells are locked again. But the question this time is, how many hours each day are the cells locked? Now, I want you guys, please, to put your answer in the comment section below the video. Let's see how many people get this correct. There is something to take into consideration with this response and let's see how many of you do it i bet the majority of people get it wrong but please prove me wrong and get it correct so how many hours each day are the cells locked the previous one we did was unlocked and this is locked please put your answer to question 18 in the comment section below number 19 300 prisoners take part in a sporting event of these 10 do the 100 meter sprint 60 do the long jump 60 do the 200 meter sprint, 80 do the high jump, 70 do the 1500 meter race, and 20 do the 400 meter hurdles. What percentage of prisoners take part in the long jump? So we know there's 300 prisoners in total. So we've got to add up the total number of prisoners taking part, which is 300. Then we need to calculate 60, which is 60 actually do the long jump, as a percentage of 300 to get our answer. So 60 divided by 300 equals 0.2. Multiply by 100 for the percentage equals 20%. You can use a calculator. So make sure you've got one before you actually do the real prison officer selection test. Question 20. 300 prisoners take part in a sporting event of these. 10 do the 100 meter sprint. 60 the long jump. 60 200 meter sprint. 80 do the high jump. 70 do the 1500 meter race. 20 do the 400 meter hurdles. If 10% of prisoners leave the 400 meters hurdles to take part in the long jump, how many prisoners will there be taking part in the long jump? I'll repeat that. If 10% of prisoners leave the 400 meters hurdles to take part in the long jump, how many prisoners will there be taking part in the long jump? Please put your answer to this question in the comments section below the video, please. So you see that the questions are getting slightly harder as we move along. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to move on to the kind of test questions you'll get at the recruitment assessment day. So I've given you a pretty broad brush, a sample of some of the questions. So the next ones are reading comprehension tests and also checking tests where you're checking for prisoners to see how many are missing. So what I want you to do to get these tests 
is to click the link below the video and it will take you through to my website where you can get access to a workbook and also to online prison officer tests. So you can be learning like hundreds more test questions, practicing them within a few seconds from now. So just click the link below the video and you can start practicing some more kind of test questions for both the online prison officer selection test and the recruitment assessment day version. Guys, thank you very much for watching the video. I'd really appreciate it if you give the video the, the video a thumbs up, please, because that will encourage me to do more. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just click the subscribe button. Um, and then you'll get notified by email when I create further, vi further videos that will help you pass any kind of selection test. Don't forget to put your answers to all the questions in the comments section below for marking. And um, yeah, I wish you all the best in your pursuit to becoming a prison officer. And if you've got any questions about any part of the prison officer selection process, just ask the question in the comments section below and I'll be more than happy to answer it.